Hello, so I'm going to show you how to do a chive squared test. So this is a non-parametric test, um, usually used if distributions are not normally distributed. Um, and if you're kind of looking at data that's not um, usually kind of interval. Um, to use a chive squared test, this is the, kind of the most complicated of all the parametric ones that we've talked about. Uh, DV has to produce nominal data. Um, and it's for independent measures designs and you're exploring the difference between two things. Um, so if we have a look at oh, my NatWest banking and things. Um, that's a question. Uh, so we've got here a study looking at the frequency of cancers and non-cancers in smokers and non-smokers from a sample of 1,425 people. We've got the results here. Now, you probably get a table like this uh, in the exam. Um, it's unlikely that they'd ask you to do a completely you know, full chai squared, but you have to know how to do it because they might give you like a half completed one. You've got to say kind of what you do next or um, like with one of the questions, it had a standard deviation question. You have to say what the end part of the formula was and it was a number of participants. It might be a question like that. So you have to kind of have an understanding of the chai squared, but you'd never have to do a full chi squared like chi squared takes such a long time which you'll see uh, when i go through this so first things first thing first and um, if you have a table you need to basically total the rows and you need to total the columns so 230 plus 78 is 308 then we've got 465 and 652, which is 1107. And then we've got 230 and 465, which is 695. And then we've got 78 plus 652, which is 730. And then when you add Um, this and this up, we should get the same score. So 308 plus 117 is 145, which should be the sample, which it is. So if you get the right number of that, then you know you've done your columns right, you've not made any mistakes uh, when you've been adding them up. Uh, plus 730. So yep, we get the same. So that's the first step. And if we flip back to this one, the next thing to do once you've added them is to use this formula to calcul calculate what's called the expected values. So the ones that are already in the table um, and the ones on this one, these are the observed values, but you're working out the expected values. And then you do kind of all this formula afterwards. So we'll get to that in a minute. So you kind of need to have like a table such as this. So if we just kind of use these and put that these are the observed, because we'll basically need all these later. So we can put kind of like the expected ones underneath them. So if we use this one, so we've got row total times column total divided by overall total. So if I kind of put the working out on here, so for the cancer smokers, which is this one and this one, so it's 230, uh, the raw total is 308. And then we times that by the column total, which is 695. And then, so let's see what that gets first. So 308 times 695. Hmm, have I done that right? I think I have. Seems, seems big that, but I think it's right. 14060. And then you're dividing that by the overall total, which is this one. So then it will become a lot smaller. So divide that by 145. And then we end up with 150.22. So we do it's two decimal places, that's kind of accurate enough. Um, and that's the right answer because I remember it from when we did it. Um, then you would do the next one. So in fact, what you could put in there is that 150.2. In fact, is that right? Just check. That be the expected one. Yeah, that gives you the expected values. So you can put that in there as the expected. Uh, so let's do the next one. So we've got non-cancer. Um, let's do smokers again. So this would be um, the 
row total, so one, 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 seven, uh, times by the column total, which is six, nine, five, um, and then press equals. Don't then divide it because if you, on some kind of calculators, or it's mainly when you use your phone, if you press divide, what it ends up doing is doing that one divided by that one and then times in sometimes so you don't end up with the right answer so make sure you do the first calculation press equals then divide so if we get the calculator out it's 1117 times 695 and then if I tell that doing 775 divided by the overall total which is 1425 so divided by 1425 that gets us 544.78 and then that's our expected value in there and then you do the same for these ones so this chi squared is always kind of a very kind of long test which is why it's very unlikely that we're going to actually do the whole thing so we've got um non-smokers and cancer, so we've got the row total and the column total, which is 730, um, and then dividing by that overall total, which should get you so 308 times 730 divided by 45, so we've got 157.78, so that's expected value for that one. And the final one, which is non-cancer and non-smokers, is 117 times 730 divided by the overall total times by 730 divided by the overall. So we've got 572.22 because we've rounded up because the seven's there next to the two. So that there is the final expected value. Now essentially what this test is doing is to see whether or not the difference is found between smokers and non-smokers who have cancer and smokers and non-smokers who have non-cancer is significant. Is it actually a real difference? Is it a significant real difference? Or if it's not, then is the difference is found just due to chance, or rather the difference is found just due to chance. So that's kind of what it's trying to establish. Are the differences actually real differences or are they due to chance? So once you've got all the observed and the expected values by using that formula, so the, raw, the formula was um, row total times column total, then divided by overall total. So that's that one, just so you remember. Uh, then the next thing to do is to use, where is it, this one. So this is kind of like a bit more complicated. So, just paste that in there. The x squared is standing for chi squared, so that's all that means. This here is a sigma, which means total. Um, and then this here is the observed value, take away the expected value um, squared, then divided by the expected value. So essentially what you've got to do is ignore the sigma to start off with. You're calculating this section of it for each of these, then you are totaling it and then that will get the chi squared results of the observed value. So if we go with um, cancers, uh, cancer and smokers, that one. If actually we do all that first and then we've got more very bad in it. So these are all the expected values. So it says observed minus expected. So the observed one for cancer and smokers is 230. So it's 230 minus the expected. Then that is squared, which basically essentially means times by itself. But if you put the power button on your um, calculator, you will be able to do it. Um, and then divided by the expected which in this case is 150.22 so that should get you i don't think i'm going to have to do this on this calculator unless there's a scientific option oh there we go okay right so we've got 230 
minus 150.22. Um, and then we need to square this, so this one here. And then you are dividing by the expected value. So then the answer will be 42.37. And then for this one, it's going to be so for non smokers, sorry, non cancer and smokers, so non cancer and smokers, the observed value is 465. So it's going to be 465 minus the expected value squared and then divided by that expected value there. So that is going to be um, 465 minus 544.78. And then square it and then divide by the expected value, which is 44.78, gets you 11.68. And then the observed value for cancer and non smokers was 78. So that's going to be 78 minus that expected and squared and then divided by that expected so that gets you you shouldn't be end up with any minus numbers because once you square it um it becomes a positive anyway so at this stage and then divided by that so we've got 40.34 and then the final one so we've got non smokers and non-cancer so we've got 652 as the observed, so we're taking that away from the expected. Oh no, the expected away from the observed. Squared and then divided by the expected value. So that will be... two square divided by expected, which is 11.12. So we've got all those values there, and then, so that's basically all that section. Now we've got to add them all together because sigma means total. So you basically just, you know, total them all, which is going to be, so we've got 42.37, um, 11.68, 40.34, and 11.12. So we get 105.51. So let me check I've done that right. Hmm. Let me just check my answer. No, I'm not losing my mind. I've done it right. Um, that would be awkward if I hadn't, wouldn't it? So this here is the observed value, which basically is the chi-squared value. Okay. Um, now, at this point, you don't really know what that means because, you know, we're trying to assess whether or not these fines are significant, whether or not people who have cancer are more likely to be a smoker or not. Um, so we're looking for that kind of, um, whether that impacts on the other. Um, so we kind of need to look at a critical value to compare it against to see whether or not um, it's significant. So if we have a look at the instructions, it says in order to calculate the critical value, you need to calculate the degrees of freedom. So the degrees to which the data is free to vary. So it says here to calculate it that you need to do the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So the number of rows, now when it says number of rows, it means the number of rows of data, not including the totals. We put those on like before, like afterwards, didn't we? Like just before in the beginning of this test, but after we'd already got the data. So there is only two rows of data, cancer and non-cancer, and there are only two columns of data. So that would mean then that to calculate the degrees of freedom, it's two minus one, because there's two rows, times two minus one because there's two columns which will equal one times one which is one so the degree of freedom um is one for this uh, set of data now what you do when you've got the degrees of freedom is you look in the chi squared 
um, critical value table. This is essentially what this is. So if it was asking you, you know, how do you assess whether or not a chi-squared observed value was significant, you would say you would look in the chi-squared critical value table um, and you would um, look for the degrees of freedom down the side, uh, which we said it's one. And the significant level that we always tend to use in psychology for most research is 0.05. So in this case, the critical value would be 3.8. So our critical value is 3.8. So we've got our observed value of 105.51 and our critical value of 3.8. So you have to make a comparison between these to see you know, whether it's significant or not. So if we look back at the instructions, it says, in order for the study to be significant, the final observed chi-squared value must be greater or equal to the critical value which it is. So observed value is greater and it's much greater than the critical value and therefore is significant. There is a significant difference between whether, whether you are a smoker or non-smoker and your incidence of cancer. So there you go, as easy as that. So it might look really, really complicated, but it's not. It's just a lot of repetitive calculations. You just have to use you know, the formulas correctly, interpret them correctly. So you're doing this bit first and then you're summing the whole thing because it's this here is at the side of both the top and the bottom. If this was on the top, you would sum all of that first and then divide, but because it's here in front of both the, the top and the bottom, so the, the, the numerator and the denominator section of the kind of fraction, you have to sum all of this once you've done it. So it's just repetitive doing that. You work at your degrees of freedom, you look in the critical value table. Those critical values will be always kind of be given, you won't be asked to kind of memorize this or anything like that. So that's pretty straightforward. And you just compare them and with the chi squared, the observed value has to be greater than the critical value. Bear in mind if it was a different test, it might be the other way around, but you just have to remember chi squared observed is greater than critical and then that'll tell you if it's significant. I hope that was helpful um, and now you see how simple chi squared is you'll stop worrying about it so much. Um, if you've got any questions just let me know.